The human eye is so complex that some question, does the human eye prove that God exists? Though it might look small, it contains many working parts that give us the sense of sight. The human eye detects color, depth, movement, angles, and distance. But how does it work from within? How does the eye convert light waves into color and familiar objects? In this Psychedemia episode, I explore human's most dominant sense, vision. When looking at an object, like this bright red strawberry, your eyes are not picking up particles of the color red. Rather, they're picking up electromagnetic energy or light waves that you perceive as red. You see, visible light that humans detect is just one portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Others include radio waves, x-rays, and what some snakes sense, infrared rays. This is determined by wavelengths, both long and short. You can see part of the visual spectrum in rainbows. Remember Roy G. Biv from elementary school? When light hits an object like this strawberry, light waves are either reflected or absorbed. Your eyes are picking up the reflected light. The wavelength of the reflected light determines what color you see. The color red, for example, has a long wavelength, about 600 nanometers, while the color blue has a short wavelength, about 475 nanometers. In both examples, your eyes are not perceiving a red strawberry or a blue t-shirt. Rather, they are detecting certain wavelengths and your visual cortex in the brain interprets this message as a particular color. But how do light waves enter the eye and convert into neural impulse that reach the visual system in the brain? Light first enters the eye at the cornea, which both protects the eye and bends the light for focus. One of the most common eye injuries is a scratched cornea because it's the outermost layer. Light then enters the pupil, the small dark opening in the center of the eye. This is the ceiling of the Pantheon in Rome, Italy. Think of the pupil as this opening letting light through. Surrounding the pupil is the iris, the colored part of the eye. The iris can be shades of blue, brown, green, or hazel. Some people have two color irises called heterochromia. Iris is actually a muscle that controls the size of the pupil. It either dilates or constricts in response to light. For example, in the dark, the iris dilates or widens to let more light in to see. Next time you're with your loved one, let them know how you truly feel. Behind the pupil is the lens which focuses incoming light. The lens projects incoming light onto the retina in the back of the eye. It changes shape depending on whether you're looking at something far away or close up. When the lens changes shape, this is called accommodation. Think of the lens on a camera that is constantly changing shape until the image is in focus. The retina is a light-sensitive surface on the back of the eye containing two types of photoreceptor cells, cones and rods. The retina is where light waves convert neural messages to begin processing what you see. The retina in humans is red, as seen in this image of the back of the eye. Ever take a picture and someone appears to have red eyes? This is because too much light has entered through the pupil. What you're seeing is the interior surface of the eye called the fundus, which includes the retina. Cones are photoreceptor cells that are sensitive to bright light and color. They are what help us see during the day. Rods, on the other hand, are photoreceptor cells that are sensitive to black, white, and gray. They are responsible for helping us see in dim light or at night. The center of the retina is called a fovea. Most of our cones are grouped together around the fovea, represented here by the letter C. The rods are primarily situated on the peripheral, represented by the letter R. Why is this important? While it's hard to believe, it is very difficult to process colors in our peripheral vision. This is because cones, which are sensitive color, are centrally focused. Try an experiment. Have a friend hold a colored pencil to either the left or right side of your vision and stare straight ahead. See if you can tell what color they're holding. Chances are you can't tell. As they slowly move the colored pencil to the center of your eye, you should be able to detect the specific color. After light triggers a reaction in the rods and cones, chemical messages then activate bipolar cells, followed by activating nearby ganglion cells. The axons of ganglion cells make up the optic nerve. This is the nerve that carries neural impulses from the eye to the brain. Damage to the optic nerve could result in blindness. It is important to note that there are no cones or rods where the optic nerve leaves the eye. This is called the blind spot. To see your blind spot, take a sheet of paper and draw a plus sign on the left side and a circle on the right. Close your left eye and, with your right eye open, stare at the plus sign. Slowly move the paper toward and away from your face. Like magic, the circle should disappear. 
Processing visual information, like recognizing a friend's face on the street, does not end with the eye. The brain is what allows us to interpret and make sense of what we see. This occurs in the visual cortex, located in the occipital lobe in the back of the head. After light is converted into neural impulses and travels down the optic nerve, it makes its way to the structure of the brain called the thalamus. The thalamus relays messages to other parts of the brain. The message then makes its way to the occipital lobe where the information is processed. Remember those images at the beginning of the lecture to provide examples of color, depth, movement, angles, and distance? These are detected by a group of neurons in the visual cortex of the occipital lobe, called feature detectors. Hitting a ball coming at you at 90 miles per hour, detecting the ball's speed and angle, would not be possible without feature detectors. When it comes to detecting colors, two theories emerge. The trichromatic theory, also called the young helmholtz theory, contends that the retina contains three different receptors for color, that being red, green, and blue, and that all the colors we see in the world are made up of a combination of these three. The opponent process theory claims that our visual system contains three pairs of colors, red-green, yellow-blue, and black-white. The colors in each pair oppose or compete with one another. Consequently, we can only detect the presence of one color at a time. Staring too long at one color in each pair can cause fatigue, which will cause the opposite color to appear. This is why objects don't look yellowish-blue, for example. Opponent process theory also helps explain why we see after images. Though vision is an amazing process, serious damage to the visual system can cause disruptions in our sense of sight. Prosopagnosia, also known as face blindness, is a rare neurological disorder where people cannot recognize familiar faces. For more information on this topic, I recommend reading The Man Who Mistook His Wife for Hat by the late Oliver Sacks.